for years, they had this event in Rosenberg, Texas. And we would hear about it because these professional team ropers would rope at the Windy Run on Friday and drive all night, Friday night, to get down and rope at the Danny Deets on Saturday. I knew it was important these guys would support it that way. The ego's checked at the door because everyone understands it's about helping those that protect us every day. I can only speak for myself, but I'm pretty sure it's very similar to every person that opens that door and gets that message. Um, it, it's really hard to describe what happens with your body and your mind, and there's just no way to explain specifically those emotions because it cannot be replicated to find out that your loved one is not coming through those doors. It sent shockwaves around the entire community. It just, it crippled us. It was like 9-11 all over again, but only inside of our community. It let us know we weren't superheroes. My mission then became to keep Danny's memory alive and honoring him. It was very important for me. I didn't want his name to be forgotten because I knew how hard he fought in those mountains and how much he loved his country. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody remembered him and he wouldn't fade away. What most people don't know is that when your military spouse is killed, their paycheck is cut the moment they get killed. So that paycheck is gone and it's very scary. There's a long financial gap until benefits and everything come in. They just know he's dead and they stop paying you. That's just the way it is. That's the way the military system is. But the mortgage is still due. The rent is still due. Car payments are due. Tuition's due. Like, all the bills are still coming out. But we really didn't have a plan in place to support families. And June 28, 2005, we had to figure it out. We had to figure it out right now. It was so monumental. You could not ignore it. No red tape, they can cut a check immediately. It just boils down to, do you need help? Yes. Okay, well, we're here to help you. We do a big fundraiser on Memorial Weekend every year here, and the group of people that come with me will be uh, other surviving spouses, SEALs, active duty, and retired that come to support the event and what it stands for. This is that one holiday that we say thank you to all the families that lost their loved ones overseas, lost their loved ones in training. It's a celebration of life. We came up with the idea of team roping because you have to succeed as a team and the SEAL team's motto is two is one, one is none kind of carried a team rope into where you have to have both people be exactly precise and perfect at the same exact time in an uncontrollable atmosphere to win. This is one of the biggest open opens of the year. It, they set it up really well. It's a, uh, you know, good steers, good barrier. Gotten to be a really prestigious rope and it's grown every year. Always been glad to be a part of it. The same group of guys, same top caliber cowboys every year. Junior Naguerre, Caleb Jiggers, Dave Corkill, Wesley Thorpe, Trevor Brazil, Patrick Smith, I could go on and on. How cool is that when you get your top athletes in the world? Say, yeah, I want to help. I'll show up. When they said you want to do the rodeo, I said, yeah. Well, I didn't know anything about it. We came out and 
There was such a similarity between the teams in bull riding, in the Bronx, and everything else from watching them in the shoots, taping up, getting ready. As soon as I walked back, all the hair on my arm stood up, and I felt at home, I did. It's the exact same look and stare you get when you're riding on a helo and you get about 30 seconds out and everything goes white. You're just processing speed goes through the roof and you're inputting so much information, thing, the ambient temperature, the wind blast, everything is rushing at you a million miles a minute. You're processing it all and you're laser focused. That's exactly what they were. I mean, I, I was in awe, I loved it. You start realizing as a rodeo or Western lifestyle person, these people, they hold sacred the same values and the same things that we hold sacred. Hard work, respect, honor, sacrifice. And so there's this immediate kind of common ground between the two groups of people. The team roper community, the rodeo community has really supported and rallied around this foundation and, and the purpose of what they're doing. And so these ropers come in and they're able to compete in the sport that they love, but there's also this sense of purpose. All these guys come out and support because they understand that it's not about us. It's about giving back. Having these guys come to a roping event, you know, something that we do every day that are out, it's outside of their element, it's, it's super cool to have them involved. And I mean, they're like heroes to us. Rodeo is amazing. It is. I try not to be weird, but I'm starstruck by those guys. I am. Like, I just watch them. Like, oh. There's nothing you'll do that's an easy win. There's no good throw. There's no good ride. Your body's going through a car crash for eight seconds, no matter what. And in order to hit that level, in order to be a Navy SEAL in rodeo, you are demolishing yourself for your entire career. And to know that they come to this event specifically because of us, like, you guys are coming here to support us? Like, I'd follow you guys around. You see these guys and they're pinnacle level warriors. I mean, they're cut out of granite. They're almost scary looking dudes. And then you meet them and they are the most humble, respectful, kind guys. And you have this immediate respect for them. You want to support them. I get goosebumps walking around because get, I get to meet a lot of the SEALs and the people involved. And I mean, they were handed me the, the trident at the end and they were, you know, thanks for coming, supporting it. And I'm like, I mean, that's whatever. You know, you guys are the, the coolest guys ever. Starting from the top on the people that we lost, 2005 in Operation Red Wings, Lieutenant Michael Murphy, Sonar Technician, second class, Matthew Axelson, Machinist Mate, second class, Eric Patton, Senior Chief, Information Systems, Daniel Healy, Quartermaster, second class, James Sue, Gunner's Mate, second class, Danny Dietz, Chief Fire Controlman, Jacques Fontaine, Lieutenant Commander, Eric Christensen. Electronics Technician, First Class, Jeffrey Lucas. Lieutenant, Michael McGreevy. Hospital Corpsman, First Class, Jeffrey Taylor. Staff Sergeant, Seamus O. Goar. Chief Warrant Officer, Corey Goodnature. Sergeant, Kip Jacoby. Sergeant First Class, Marcus Morales. Major Stephen C. Reich, Sergeant First Class Michael Russell, Chief Warrant Officer Schirkenbach, and Master Sergeant James Ponder. Those were the names that were lost in that mission that night and the ones that we're here to remember. How are you? Good. I don't know which one we want to go with here. Those are just fit in these. I just want to make sure we have one just to... 
like the drive presentation okay. stuff. All right. Okay, that's what I'm talking about, just the, the A zone, the zero. We'll, we'll shoot about five, seven yards. Be able to lock it down and be in control of when we put our finger on the trigger. When we take it off, positive move. You'll have more control of a gun and recoil like this. Okay. You're done. Locked in. And just good grip. There it is. There you go. Those are awesome. Those are really good. Nine of us were all medically retired back to back and we all deployed together in the same cycle over and over. And it's like, eventually you wake up and you just can't do it anymore. A lot of the issues we have come from the transition because you buy into that organization, that community and so much, so wholeheartedly that it becomes part of your DNA. And when you leave it, a lot of people can't recover for a long time, me being one of them. It was so hard to step away, and when you finally did, you didn't have a why. There was no reason to wake up. There was no reason to do anything. You lose your sense of belonging. You don't have it anymore. So when we drive it out right to the wall, we know it's about to fire. Finger out, and break it back down. This event became like a safe haven. Like, you don't have to be a Navy SEAL here. Like, people are gonna know you are, but you don't have to answer any questions. We can all come out here there's no SEALs here, it's just us. And we can have like a little private reunion. So that's what a lot of the guys come out here with now. So what you see when, when some of the embraces go longer than normal, that's what it is. It's, it's a quick buddy check. Like, I know you're not okay. I'm not okay either, but we'll help each other.